Hey, how's it going? It's Harrison Burns of Grooming Teens again, and today I'm joined by Fabian, who's joining me again gladly to share and discuss how to get others to talk through their pain and their grief. Fabian, could you please give me your age for the record one more time? Uh, I'm 20 years old, and thanks for having me here. Good to have you back, Fabian. Anyway, my first question to you, obviously, is what are some of the ways that we can approach others to talk about their pain and their grief? Uh, you know, I think one of the ways that you can approach others to help them deal with their grief is, you know, just to let them know that you're there for them, because that can really open, you know, like, that opens, an op that opens up an opportunity for them to, you know, just feel like we can have someone to talk to. You know, they won't feel entirely alone. They might not understand your situation entirely, but it definitely helps to, like, have someone there, you know, to talk to. I agree. Um, in your experience, does it help to show a certain inherent amount of vulnerability within a conversation or with, when you're approaching somebody in order to kind of help them open up? Like, for, for example, would be, hey, I understand what you're going through. I've been right there, too. I can, might not be able to empathize, but I can sympathize with you. Does it help to kind of show that vulnerability? Uh, yeah, it definitely does. I think, in my opinion, like I, it definitely makes you feel like you're you know, giving some amount of support, you know, despite the fact that they might not understand your situation, but, um, you know, any kind of support that you can get from anyone is usually pretty helpful, like, even if they might under not understand your, you know, situation. Hmm. I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think that you can be a friend to somebody in grief going through something difficult at the time? Uh, just be open. I, like, just be open to like listen to them and just hear them out like again even if you don't understand their problem entirely like just knowing that you're there for them helps a lot and it doesn't make you feel as alone in the world you know when you're dealing with something just being present sometimes is enough yeah honestly like it's better than being alone when you're dealing with something really rough yeah i mean humans inherently are social creatures so i get that aspect a lot Mm -hmm. um in your experience does it like does the gesture of making yourself available to talk uh help others open up even if it's not right away even if it's not immediately within the same conversation but even just the show of hey whenever you're ready to talk i'm here or you always have an ear to listen or a shoulder to cry on i'm here to understand you do you think that's a surefire way to get others to open up uh not always because you know like some people are more reserved than others, but, um, you know, just showing that you're open for someone can be pretty meaningful. I think it's pretty minimal, meaningful for me, on my, in my opinion, because, like, I, I think, you know, I, I'm just happy to have somebody that I can talk to, you know, regardless, you know, of the situation, and, you know, I think it's, I think that's just really meaningful to be able to just openly discuss your, you know, your stuff with somebody. I agree. What are some of the ways in which you yourself have helped others or even yourself through grief? The methods that you use, do you keep a journal? Do you write, uh, read? What are some of the uh, catharsis that you utilize in order to move past the pain or at least move forward with it and help alleviate stress along the way? You know, a lot of people have told me that writing, like just your thoughts out on like on a notebook or something or a journal, or whatever, like is actually pretty helpful like I thought it was kind of silly at the beginning but it's actually like super helpful because you're just kind of like writing what you're like feeling and you're just kind of essentially just like putting it away somewhere else it's almost like just letting things out in a way but I, yeah like that's just that's one way that I like cope with things and other ways that I've coped with like you know when I'm, whenever I'm going through something rough or like you know just doing things that I like doing like going out for a walk, you know, it just helps clear my mind and it just helps me relax. I also like playing music. I play piano. I play a little bit of guitar. That's like a fun outlet for me. You know, it's... Yeah, music can be a great help in times of strife. I know because I play piano as well. So I know. Um, my last Listening question to music you know... too. Oh, say again? Listening to music too is pretty helpful. Yes, I would agree. <laughs> just some of the things that kind of relax and give yourself a little break from reality every now and again, yeah. I think are really, really helpful. And even if, even with keeping a journal, referring to that, 
I've actually spoken to quite a few people who say that even writing in a journal and sometimes even if you read it over and look back on it to see what, how you were dealing with things and what you were feeling to self-analyze and be critical of yourself to help yourself move forward with it is helpful. Or even if you just want to write and then shred it and tear it up, never look at it again, put it away in a box and seal it off to India or mm -hmm. uh, even just burn it right after you've written in it. Sometimes that helps people. Um, so there are other methods that you can use. So I, I think people are limiting themselves to their resources and everything that's out there. So remain open. Yeah. Um, my last question to you is, in your opinion, uh, do you think that getting about their pain for the first time is key to moving forward with it? Do you think that admitting that they need help or to seek help, do you think sometimes is the first thing that needs to be done? Uh, sorry, would you mind repeating that? You got kind of cut off on my part. No worries. Do you think that in your opinion, the first thing that people need to do is address the issue at hand? So in order to move forward with it, do you think it's, you think it's crucial and absolutely imperative that people admit that they need help or to seek help in order to move forward with it? Uh, yeah, to a certain degree, yeah. Um, like, it's really difficult because, like, like I said, some other people are more reserved than others. But, um, like, if you don't really, like, try to, like, address those issues in any way and just, like, just with it, like, it's, you're not really going to recover from it. Like, you got to, you know, like, gosh, I messed up here. Uh, should we repeat that? <laughs> oh, no, go ahead. I mean, take your time. If you need me to repeat the question, I can. Um, yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> so... In your opinion, do you think that getting people to talk openly for the first time and admitting that they have a problem, do you think that's imperative to moving forward with it? Um, yeah. I, damn it. <laughs> oh, man. I, I kind of need a, a moment to think about that one. Because that one's a really good question, though. That's, that one's pretty deep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a deep thinking question because it, it brings about someone's inherent perspective as to what's really important when you address an issue. I think that's, I think that's personally, for at least for me, the way that I view it is until you address the problem at hand, until you admit that there's an elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about, but it's there. I don't think people really have the option to move forward with it. They have to be communicative with others. They have to be open. Otherwise, when you shut yourself off or you internalize too much, inevitably it will come out and it'll bite you in the ass. So gotcha. yeah, that's what I meant to say, but like, I got like all jumbled, jumbled up. <laughs> It's okay. Sometimes, like I said, this is a discussion between you and I. So sometimes it helps to share perspectives so that people understand. Because a lot of the time, getting more than one opinion on something, especially if it's a personal issue that you need uh, a, res a resolution to, sometimes it helps to talk to others about it instead of just, like I said, internalizing everything and keeping it within. Because if it's never out in the open, and this goes with anything, an idea, something creative you want to do, a project you want to work on, anything at all. If you don't get it out there in the open, you will never know how amazing it could be, how fast it could be resolved if it's a problem, or the way, the ways and the methods other people use in order to address said issue. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, but that's essentially all we have. Fabian, I appreciate your time, and I appreciate your input on this matter. It was a great discussion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good to be here. Thanks. Yeah, likewise. Take care. All right, you too.